Hello guys, today I'm going to show you how to do the 9 easter egg on Black Ops 4 Zombies. So before I get into this, I just want to say wow. I have had to re-record re this video at least like 5 or 6 times now. Both for me just failing to explain things or just giving bad information or just messing certain steps up. Um, just, I've had a lot of trouble um, getting this video put together and a lot of the sources I've had to go to to get information about doing this egg which I have done before but I had to refresh myself in the steps have just been awful and there are so many guides out there that give you wrong steps on how to do this easter egg it actually blows my mind but anyways enough ranting and raving so let's just get to the meat and potatoes so pre setup so this is for solo um, what I recommend for your uh, elixirs anywhere but here I recommend Arsenal Accelerator, although this one can also be replaced with Stock Option. I recommend Temporal Gift, and I recommend Equipment. So again, just a quick refresher on what each of these elixirs do. do. So um, anywhere but here, again, you get cornered. You don't want to go down. You can pop it. Uh, Arsenal Accelerator, it charges your special weapon fast, faster, so if you have a podium challenge that needs to be done, but it's a uh, you know one that requires your special weapon, you can pop this. Temporal Gift, if a double points drops, you can pop this, you'll get longer double points to maximize your points. And then finally, Equipment, if you run out of Homunculus, you can pop one of these and it instantly refreshes your Homunculus. Okay, so for perks, I recommend you run Dying Wish, Quick Revive, Time Slip, and Stamina Up. So, of all these four, um, I would say the one that has a little bit of leeway is Time Slip. If you're going to choose another one, I would recommend doing Winner's Whale. There's a lot of steps in this Easter egg that require you to keep a zombie and maybe look around for things. And, you know, um, Winner's Whale, if you want to take your time a little bit, it'll help you do that. But you can also use Time Slip to run through the box and pack a punch faster, which also saves time. So now you have um, Dying Wish. Again, prevents you from going down, helps you keep all your perks. Um, quick Revive helps you regenerate your health faster. And Odin is a stamina up just because we'll be running around the map quite a bit. And, you know, you, I want us to be able to do that as fast as possible, so I have that as my Odin. As for your weapons, you have the Hammer of Valhalla. Um, this is good for solo. Um, if doing co-op, I'd recommend doing the Scepter of Ra, just because it can revive your teammates and they keep all their perks. But otherwise, this, go this one right here has good DPS, so I, I recommend the Hammer. Wraithfire is optional, but I would recommend it. Um, if you want a free perk, you can bring it along. And then finally, your starting weapon does not matter at all. Pick whatever you want. All right, so now that you have your class set up, I will meet you in the game and explain what we have to do. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do when you spawn the game is you're really just going to do my meta guide up until when you get to pack a punch. So I'll put a link in the description to my meta guide um, if you want to watch it. And if you do not have a good understanding of the map already, I recommend watching it. And after you watch that, all you really have to do is watch until... Basically after we get pack punch open and after we get our last um, chain parts or for the acid um, trap and um, I'll super cut to that in this video just giving you uh, basically the most important moments so starting about right now I'm gonna cut to when I get to that point in the meta guide again I'm playing just as I would otherwise um, before I start cutting again just another huge important tip make sure you watch out for the fire try your best not to step into the fire here it absolutely can mess up your affinity and we're going to be going for the easter egg for the death of Orion and we need to have the best crowd affinity for that and that fire will absolutely destroy your crowd affinity so that's tip number one and I'm gonna start super cutting to that point where we're at pack a punch okay so I just claimed my first challenge claim my second challenge so I just completed my third challenge and I'm also going to pick up the pot in the middle so I'm gonna get my first shield part so I just killed my first champion just killed my second champion. Just picked up my first free perk part. Picked up my second free perk part. Just picked up my third free perk part. Just picked up my second shield part. Putting all the equipment on the um, Viking. Just killed my third champion. Getting my Viking uh, tomb lit on fire. And I failed as you can see. Just killed my fourth champion. Just got my third shield part. Just got my shield. Just got pack punch activated. Just got my second part for my acid trap. Just got my third part for my acid trap. All right, so this is where my guide, my Easter egg guide that you're watching right now, is going to deviate from my uh, meta guide, or sorry, not my meta guide, but my uh, my map guide. Um, so what you're gonna do here is let me explain how you actually start the Easter egg. So after you get pack open, 
you can now start the Easter egg. So, um, I'm going to put up on the screen basically what you're going to be doing. So, you are going to be collecting three parts to basically craft fertilizer. And you're doing this to do the Danu challenge. So that's the one you have to do first is the Danu challenge. Um, the Danu tower challenge. So you need to get char so you need to get charcoal, you need to get bone dust, and you need to get feces. So um, the first one that you can immediately start working on is the bone dust. So here in the pack a punch room, in these engraved skulls that are in the walls, one skull is going to be somewhere that has a special symbol on its forehead. You need to go up to it and pull out your specialist weapon and grab it. And we're going to be grinding that skull up later to get bone dust. So you might be asking, well, where's the skull at? So I'm going to show you all 12 skull spawns that are in this room. Now I do want to say this. For the dust, the charcoal, and the, the poop, you can get those three parts in any order. But, um, in my experience, you usually end up getting... You kind of have to work on two of them to start out with, which would be the bone dust and the uh, charcoal. So, um, the fastest one you can immediately start working on when you're in this room is getting the skull that we can turn into bone dust later. So, you're, I'll show you where all the, the um, spawns are now for the, the skull. So the first skull spawn location, you can follow this route if you want, is going to be under here. Now you might want to look at the skull for a good minute or two, or like not a minute, but like a few seconds, just to make sure that the symbol on the forehead isn't late to spawning in. So firstly, you can check underneath this like uh, this like uh, this um, this deer, this like elk kind of like uh, shield thing on the wall. The first spot you can check under here. If it's not under here, you can check underneath the snake. Um, one that is exactly opposite, and again, this is just coming into pack a punch from spawn. So you can check underneath the snake in kind of the same area, and look at that. So that's what it looks like. That's actually what it looks like in my game. Now, that's only two of the twelve spots. I'm going to show you the rest of the spots. If it's not there, run up these stairs and look sort of left right here in the wall to this torch. If it's not there, go to this next torch on the wall, and it's kind of right here in this area, kind of to the right of where that light's shining. Um, so then, if it's not there, so what you're going to do is you're going to come around here opposite to Pack-A-Punch on this little wall here. It can spawn in this area. If it's not there, you can run over here to the, the bottom of these kind of stairs right here. It can spawn right here in this wall, the next one. The next spot is diagonally across from that one in the same, about the same location, um, geographically speaking. If it's not there, you can go again across from the room. So again, remember we checked over there before. So another spot's right here in the center thing. Kind of like right here in this little area. If it's not there, it's underneath this wolf statue. So just underneath that little like kind of wolf head statue. If it's not under that, it's under the eagle like statue like plate thing. So again, just like the opposites of the room as those other ones. And then finally, if it's not there, the last two spots you can check, you go up here, look to the left kind of of this torch, that kind of like little left area, and then if it's not there, it's going to be left of this torch, kind of like the mirror image of where it was over there, possibly. And those are all the different spawns you can find the skull. It will not spawn anywhere else other than those locations. So I, will, I might also pop up a diagram on the screen to show you, just, you know, but I think it's better to kind of just learn them by looking at them, in my opinion, because that diagram can be a little hard to read. So anyways, now after you find your skull, what you're going to do is you're going to go up to it and pull out your specialist. So you're going to go up to the skull, just get really close to it, pull out your specialist, and then it pops out of place. Pick it up, there you go. You now got the skull. The next thing you're going to do, what I like to do is immediately after doing that, go over here and shoot the pot. Now we're working on getting the death of Orion. So now after I shoot that pot, I'm just going to start working on the death of Orion. I'm going to go find my head, see if it's in here, I can check right away. Nope, it's not there. So let's go to the bridge and see which tower it's at. Okay, so it's at the Odin Tower, so I'll cut to when I'm there. Okay, so I just got my head now. Now, just a reminder, all the while you're doing this, you're trying to maintain maximum crowd affinity. Now, I took a few hits back there, but if you can try to take as few hits as possible from the start of the game, you can get the Death of Orion much faster than if you don't. 
because you will need maximum crowd affinity to get the step done. So let me build the ass trap. I'm going to go ahead and put my skull down. So what I learned, apparently, is you can... Another way to get crowd affinity faster is to reject rewards. Now, I don't know if you can just claim them or reject them. So now, I would just like to take this time to remind you that um, in order to get the charcoal, we need to at least, at the minimum, get to round 10. So if we're being brutally honest, the fastest item on that list of those three things we need, so the bone dust, the charcoal, and also the poop... Technically, we can get the poop very, very early on. That's actually probably the item we can get the absolute earliest. But, simultaneously, in order to get the Death of Orion, if you're doing it like how I'm doing it, doing it through the Easter Egg, you need high crowd affinity. The thing is, is it's easy to get low crowd affinity, but I think it's personally, personally, from my experience, I find that it's harder to get high crowd affinity. It's actually pretty hard. So, um, it does not hurt to just start, like, you know... Focusing on getting that Death of Orion first by getting good crowd affinity. Now, by the time round 10 hits, if we don't have the Death of Orion, we will go on to getting the Charcoal set up. You're always going to want to get that Charcoal set up when the Gladiator first spawns in. And I have tried to do some tests. I do not think you can use the Gladiator from one of the champions if you're thinking of doing that to save time. So really what you're going to want to be doing is, by the time round 10 hits, you're going to want to be getting that um, Charcoal started. And I'll show you how to get it. I haven't showed you how to get it yet. But it's not that hard. But for now, we're just going to be focusing on our crowd affinity and trying to get the death of Orion. And one more tip when you're down here, watch out for the little, those little uh, furnaces right there. They can flame you really easily. Um, if you have to get to these middle room areas, I recommend going down the middle of the stairs because there's no uh, fire traps that can hit you. Again, like you really got to avoid those things. I'm not kidding. It will kill your affinity. So another thing you can do to start getting more crowd affinity is using your specialist wall at the arena. So if you want to start killing zombies with your specialist, that's a good way to build affinity from what I've heard. Again, watch out for that fire. It gets really aggressive around these rounds. Like, look, how, look how horrible this is. You have like no time. You basically, I go once it closes and that's your only opportunity. Alright, so I now have glowing green crowd affinity. So all I have to do is survive a uh, round here in the arena. And I also need to have my glowing green crowd affinity the whole time, I believe. And this is going to be really easy because this is a special, like this is just a tiger round. So very, very easy to do. And there we go. We got our gift from Sir Ket. Now, do not need to worry about your crowd affinity. Once you get the gift from Sir Ket, you are good to go. You do not need to worry about anything else. We're also getting a lot of fire sales. Um, if you have great crowd affinity, this is also not a bad time to start hitting the box. Unfortunately, I do not have time slip yet which is kind of an L on my part. But I'm going to go ahead and get started on this challenge because once the round progresses, we will need to... Uh, that? Go ahead. There we go. So we do need to get homunculuses eventually. So now is not a bad time to hit the box for them. Another thing is that around this round, you should start seeing um, gladiators spawn in. And we will need a gladiator to start um, doing the... Uh, what you call it? The charcoal step. So I'm a little late to getting this uh, thing lit up, but it's fine. I'm not too worried about it. Again... This is um, optional. It's not super mandatory, so don't worry about it if you mess that up or like you don't get that immediately. So now, um, just wait. Yeah, we're just waiting for a Gladiator to show up. Okay, so there's one. So those guys are very slow. Just be warned about that if you don't see one. So round ten is when a Gladiator spawns in, and this is you're immediately when he spawns in. You're gonna want to have him break, throw like an axe at one of these pyres, like these things. There's one over here, and then there's also one over there. It doesn't matter which one. I like to do the one by Ra. It'll knock off a little uh, stick of wood. You can go ahead and grab that wood, and then what you're going to do is you're going to go to the bottom of the Odin Tower. So that's this one right here. And then in the middle, there's going to be a cauldron on either side, so on this side or on this side. You're just going to go up to it and hold square. Now, that's going to put the wood right there. So what needs to happen is the game needs to progress three rounds. So after three rounds, you will be able to come back here and pick that up. So if we think about it, like, we have three rounds for that, but what about our other items? Well, we can get the poop. Honestly, if you want, go ahead and get the poop the second you get the golden urn, really. If, if you just want to do it that way, you can do it that way, too. The second you get the gift from Sir Ket, because your affinity is not that important anymore. So just go ahead, and if you want to start damaging yourself with the fire, go ahead, be my guest. Like I said, running through the fire is the best way to get lowest crowd affinity, and that's what we'll need to do to get the poop. So there we go. Now we got what we need. Thumbs, complete thumbs down. It looks like that. 
So now we just need to wait for a crowd affinity item, and then that should be our next part. So if you remember my guide for the death of Orion, we need to progress the round once to get the poison, and then we can poison the box, and then once we poison the box, that will allow us to get what we need to get the next part. So I got the poison. I'm going to go get the death of Orion. Alright, so we have our Death of Orion, and we got the Skull earlier from Pack-a-Punch. So now we can go and get our Bone Dust. So what you have to do is you have to go to this room right here, which is known as the Flooded Crypt. Okay, and somewhere in this room there's like three different spots. There's like one there, there's one right there, and that's where it is, and then there's one over there. I believe. So in those three spots, one of those three spots, a little grinder will spawn, and you don't really need to be super picky about it. I mean, you can tell where it spawns. Like, this is a small room. It's only one of those three spots. Um, once that grinder spawns in, or well, it'll be there, go ahead and put your skull in it. So just go up and square it like that. And that, remember, that's the skull we got earlier from Pack-a-Punch, when we had to check our 12 skull spots. Um, so now what you're going to do is, after you put it in there, you're going to do a charge shot in the Death of Orion, and shoot it. You need to do this three times, so you do it once, you wait until the electricity goes away, charge it again, shoot it again, and basically what you're just doing is grinding up the skull to get the bone dust. So and then we're going to have to do it one more time, and there we go, that's the last time. So now if we go up to it, we should be able to hold square on it, and get our bone dust. So, what else do we have to get now? Well, if you look at our list of items, well, we got the bone dust, now we just gotta get the poop and the charcoal. But the charcoal's not gonna be ready till about round 13, because it takes three rounds for it to finish cooking, or whatever you wanna call it. So, what we can do in the meantime, though, is try to get the poop before then. So, again, to get the poop, you just gotta get negative, absolute negative crowd affinity, which is pretty easy to do. So, we're just gonna wait for some more fire to spawn in and start taking some more damage from it. Alright, so round 13 just started, so our charcoal should be available. I'm going to go ahead and see if we can get that charcoal, which should be able to. Yep. yep. Grab that with my bare hands. So we just got the charcoal. Thanks. So now all we need to create our fertilizer is poop. So again, I'm going to go try to get that. There we go. So crowd affinity item available. So there's our poop. So there we go. We just picked it up. So now what you have to do with the poop is you have to take it along with the bone dust and the charcoal you have to take all of it to the bomb of the Zeus Tower and then when you're at the bomb of the Zeus Tower you're gonna put it in this bowl right over here right over here so it's just right here after coming down from the top of the tower over here on the far right right here around the center area of it now you need to progress one to two rounds so I put in at round 14 so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back there around round 16 and then it should be ready to be picked up. You'll know it's ready to be picked up once it is glowing green. So we're going to progress the round. So two rounds have passed. So now if I go back to the bomb of Zeus, our fertilizer should be ready to be picked up. So I'm going to go down there. You're going to pick it up. So after you pick up your fertilizer, you're going to go to the bottom of the Danu Tower, so the basement. And I'm going to show you what you have to do next. So go ahead and go to the basement of the Danu Tower. And you're going to put the fertilizer right here between the trees in the middle. It goes down right there. And as you can see, I put it down. You can see the texture. Um, so now what needs to happen is you basically... I'm going to get this challenge done. You need to um, now progress three more rounds. So we're on round 16. So that fertilizer will be ready for us by round 19. But at this point, you're going to really start wanting to work on getting... Um, a pack a punch gun with the alternate ammo type of a uh, firebomb because you'll need it for the next step. And you also really want to start working on getting homunculus. Now this next step doesn't really require homunculus I would say but if you don't have them it is significantly harder so I would try to definitely get homunculus before this next step. And I would say that um, it is mandatory that you get the firebomb alternate ammo type from the Pack-a-Punch machine on a gun. Another thing I like to say is killing gladiators is really good at increasing your crowd affinity too. In the meantime, again, I'm just going to try to work on getting that firebomb alternate ammo type. There we go. Alright, now is a perfect time to start hitting the box and trying to get homunculus. Now you do not need the hellion, but you definitely want the homunculus. 
guaranteed homunculus, you're going to want those. It's got my fit free 5th perk, and I'm about to get my free 6th perk. There we go, not too bad, that's a pretty good combo to have. Okay, so I just got homunculus out of the box. Um, again, you may want to wait a couple of rounds to get those out of the box before doing this step. I would say they're actually more mandatory for this step than the art than the Hellion is. Um, I would say the Hellion in this game is actually really only needed for maybe the last two steps in the boss fight. Or sorry, the last step in the boss fight, I guess, technically speaking. Um, so you really don't need it right now. Uh, but anyways, I'm going to go ahead and press around 19, because then that would have been three rounds since we put the fertilizer down. So let's see if it's lit up by then. Alright, so I progressed to round 19. As you can see... The feces or whatever, the fertilizer is now like fuming. So, what you have to do is with your firebomb weapon that has the. So, with your gun that's been pack a punched with the firebomb weapon, you have to kill a zombie right there on the fertilizer and have it activate the alternate ammo type. So, it's going to have to get on that, and then you're just going to have to kill him with it. Now, I have the Hellion, but I have these too, so this should make this hopefully a little bit easier. The homunculus. Come on, there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and shoot right there, and there we go. Now, once that's activated, what you have to do is it's the, the rocks underneath it are going to be blue. What you have to do is you have to stand on the rocks, they'll light up, and then just make sure you start killing a bunch of zombies around you. So that's going to be all you have to do for that. You might have to pop a specialist because you're going to have to camp right here on top of these blue rocks. Go ahead, doesn't hurt, and just start killing everything. And then eventually you will get teleported. Once you get teleported here, the first thing I recommend you do is you throw down a homunculus. What you're going to have to do is start focusing on destroying these little spores that are on the trees. Now, I hope I'm okay here because I kind of forgot my uh, weapons. I kind of came in here with the Hellion hoping it was going to be enough. There we go. Thank God that was enough. Alright. So now you're going to destroy the spores. Um, you're going to then in this room there's going to be stairs because again this is just the Daniel Tower you're going to go up the stairs and then once you get to the top you're going to throw out another homunculus there we go and then again just start shooting it with your bullet weapon or your explosive weapon in my case just look at the spore start hammering away into it if you have stock option you can pop that here and you can just spam away at it if you want so go ahead and start shooting it final max ammo there so now you're going to go up these stairs. At the very top, you're going to throw out another homunculus. Go ahead and pull out your pellion or your bullet weapon or whatever and just start shooting the spores on the tree. So you're just going to work your way up the tower. Throw out a homunculus for each layer. And there you go. Spam away. And again, a normal weapon that's packed quite a few times works just as fine. Alright, now... So you just now finished that step. Okay, so I am back. You might notice something different about my game. So, uh, I was, um, in the last game, I made a couple of things that I wanted to change. First off, I wanted to give a better recommendation for how to do this next step, but I also kind of um, got glitched. My game kind of glitched, and I think I know why it glitched. So I'm going to show you what you can do to make sure your game doesn't glitch and also how to do this next step. Alright, so once you get done um, doing that step where you shoot the spores, what you have to do is shoot four circular bull symbols that spawn throughout the map. And all of them pretty much spawn behind barriers. So I'm going to show you um, a decent path you can run to hit all of them. I'm not saying it's the best path, but just one that you can hit right away. So. What you do, before you do the step, make sure you have a shield and make sure you have ammo in it. So this shield does have ammo. It has 180. So the first symbol you can look for is right here at the top of the Danu Tower. You just look out this window and it's right there. Right there underneath like the little rafters or whatever you call them outside the stadium. So that's one possible symbol spawn. Um, there's quite a few in the map. I think there's like 9 or 10, something like that. Um, but anyways, once you see one of these symbols, you're just going to charge up your shield shot. Go ahead and do that, and then shoot it. Now here's where the glitch can happen. So whatever you do, make sure that after you hit the symbol, you just kill the gladiator. Make sure you don't wait on killing the gladiator after he spawns in. Because um, when you hit these symbols, basically a gladiator is going to spawn in, and you have to kill all four of them to charge something at the raw tower. Um... 
but again, word of advice, make sure you kill him right after he spawns in, because if you don't, um, things are just going to get much harder for you. Alright, so I just filled, killed, sorry, filled, I just killed the first gladiator, and there you go, so that's one that's going to go to the raw tower, so now I have to do the rest. So just make sure, you, and you can do this mid-round too, I'm just saving a zombie so I can show you easier. So anyways, you're at the Dana Tower, you just checked your first spot, maybe you had a bull circle there, maybe you didn't, either way. The next spot you can immediately check is you're going to go on this bridge, and you're going to look up towards that middle column right there, back behind where you initially spawned at. Um, that's the second possible spot it can spawn in. So if it's not there, you can go downstairs at Danu, go all the way down to the right of the Mozu wall by so this is going to be in the basement area to the right of the Mozu wall by which is right over here on the right is a barrier you can look through here up the stairs is another possible spawn in my game that is the next spot so I'm gonna go get my shield and shoot that so again just a reminder to prevent your game from glitching make sure you stick around and kill the gladiator before you run off away from the symbol just because if you fail to do that there's a good chance that they might despawn and not respawn back in the game I only speak for myself. I'm not saying that, you know, maybe I missed something else. Maybe there is a way to get him to spawn back in. But in my experience, I passed quite a few rounds. The player did not spawn back in. Let's go ahead and kill that guy. Alright, so I just killed another gladiator. So you're back here at this spot. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't get a circle there. Either way, what you're going to do is after you do that, you're going to run over and go to the bottom of the raw tower, specifically the basement. You're going to look through this barrier right here. And then you're going to look up above this torch on the wall. There's where your next uh, bull circle can spawn that you need to shoot with your shield. If it's not there, you're going to go back down here and run back towards where you built the shield. So that's in the pit. The barrier to the right of where you built the shield right here can spawn on this little wall right here. In my game it did, so I'm going to go ahead and hit it. Alright, I just killed that gladiator. So if your symbol is not there, the next possible spot your symbol can spawn, you're just going to, while still here where that symbol is, at the shield area, you're just going to run up these stairs right here, and then it can be on that wall right there. And it looks like, for my game, it is on that wall, so I'm going to go ahead and hit it. So there's four in total you're going to kill on the map, so if it's not that one right there, you can run, just follow me, you're just going to go down here right here to where the Odin tunnel is um, you're gonna go to uh, this area right here so again this is just the area where you go up the stairs to the Odin tower and the Zeus tower over there right through this middle thing it's gonna be on this back wall right there underneath the little uh, the little uh, gaps right there it's gonna be right there on that wall if it's not there you can go ahead and go up these stairs from Zeus you're just going to go to the very, very top. You're going to go to the bridge between the Odin Tower and the Zeus Tower. And right here on the wall will be your next possible spot. Now, if it's not there, you can go ahead and check one final spot. So you're just going to go down here. You're going to go towards the crypts. And you're going to get into this room called the Flooded Crypt. It's just going to go be all the way back here opposite from those stairs, all the way back here in the room, through that door on that wall on the right, right there. Okay, so again, I'm just going to show you a path you can run to check each symbol if you want to. So I'm not saying this is the best path, this is just the path I use. Go up to this window in the top of the Danu Tower. This is right after you got done shooting the spores. Check out there, below the stand. If it's not there, go on the bridge and check that middle pillar right there above where you spawned in. If it's not there, go back to the very bottom of... Danu, very, very bottom, back to where the base, the, the very, very, very bottom is, past the basement. Go right, check this little barricade here, check the right up to those stairs. If it's not there, double back, except this time go into the raw tower, go to this barricade right here, check above that little torch right there on the right. If it's not there, you're going to go down here. Follow this around all the way to the pit. You're going to check this window right here through this window. This is just to the right of the shield through the window right there. If it's not there, you're going to go up the stairs here and check through the left right here on the wall. That one can be a bit hard to see. If it's not there, you can run here to the Odin Tunnel. Look up here above that like kind of second area right there. If it's not there, you can go to the Odin Zeus Bridge. 
So you can take either the Odin entrance or the Zeus entrance, it doesn't matter. Your next possible spot can be right here, up against this wall, other side of Zeus, right there. And then if it's not there, you're just going to go all the way back down. All the way back down. You're going to make a left, we're going to go through the crypts. And then you're going to go past this room right here into the flag crypt, which is right here. Make a left. There's zombie spying, which is kind of annoying, and it's going to be through that door right there. And that's the last possible spot you can check. Okay, so after you have killed um, your four gladiators that you got from shooting your four circular bull symbols around the map, and I'm going to pause so I can explain what you have to do next, you're going to want to do a couple of things. So if you don't have this stuff memorized, which you probably don't, I mean, I don't have it all memorized because, you know, I don't play this map a whole, whole lot. Um, what you're going to do is you are going to have to use the pillar that is at the top of the raw tower. So you can do this, you can use this pillar once per round or twice in a row if you complete it. So you have to do this challenge two times with this pillar and it lights up, it going up the pillar, it fills up the pillar from bottom to top with symbols. Um, you'll know you did the first challenge right if all the four symbols on the bottom are permanent and they stay there. Um, otherwise, if you fail, you'll have to progress the round. Another thing about this challenge I, is I believe it cannot be activated during a special round. So anyways, if you return to Ra and you look right there, um, on the little pillar in the Ra Tower, you are going to have a symbol at the bottom of it. Now, I want you to take account of two things. So first, what I want you to do is I want you to have a notepad opened up, and I'll show you what you have to write down. Um... All you have to write down is something like raw tower, and I'll pop it up on the screen. And then I also want you to take a look at this little diagram that I have. Well, it's not really a diagram, but basically this shows you what's going to light up on the raw tower. So you're going to have different symbols that are going to light up on the raw tower when you use it. Um, if you're in co-op, you might have to have all players use the raw tower to get the symbols to light up in the main game to start, or they might all have to be in the uh, the raw like whole building itself, the raw tower itself. Um, so again, this, um, kind of obelisk is at the very top of the raw tower. You're going to go up to it, you're going to use it. Now, when you use it, it's going to despawn all the enemies around you. So even though you see in my game, I mean, it looks like I'm about to get destroyed, I have, um, I'm going to start this challenge, so all the enemies are going to go away. So it's okay to start this mid-round. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to use the obelisk, and then a lockdown is going to start. Now, you'll be locked inside the building of Ra, but what's going to happen is you're going to need to note down the order of the symbols and what they correspond to zombie-wise, top to bottom in your notes. And I'll show you how to do this, because I'll do it in my game. Um, when you do this, the purpose of doing this is in order to beat the Ra Tower Challenge, you have to kill these enemies in a specific order. And that order is from the one that first appears to the one that appears last. And they go from bomb up to the tower. So they start at the bomb and they go up. So it flashes one, two, three, four. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like. Now, you'll be locked in this tower and you will need to run around, find the right zombie, kill it, and then kill the next zombie. So it's almost like the plant step from Voyage. If you saw my Voyage guide, this is very similar to that step, except it's just with four zombies instead of, you know, all the plants in the solar system. So... Before I activate that, um, I'm actually going to get rid of Brain Rot on my weapon, and I suggest you do the same if you pat repacked and you have Brain Rot on your gun. You do not want Brain Rot for this challenge, and you also will not be using the Homunculus, um, as it can mess you up. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and activate the Pyramid. You're going to look at the Pyramid, step back. Now let's look at the symbols that spawn in. Okay, so that's our first symbol. If we look at the diagram, which I'll have popped up on the video, that corresponds to electric zombies. So, we'll put down electric. Now let's see what comes next. So now we have that one. Well, and I, again, just like with the voyage step, you can pause in between each symbol so you can note them down. Similarly, the host can do this if you're in a party and you're doing co-op. The host can pause the game and it'll pause for everyone. You can go ahead and do this as you're getting them down. So we had electric to start out with. So let's see, what was this one? So we have that one. So if we look at the little thing I put up, that will be the gladiator. So now we have gladiator. So we'll put that down in our notes. So now let's see what the next one is. So now we have that one. So that one's water. So in our notes we're going to put down water. 
and there should be one more. So each time, so you have to do this challenge twice, and each time it spawns in four zombies. So and then the fourth one, and that'll be the final for the first part of this challenge, is the brawler. So what's going to happen is we're going to be locked down the tower. Uh, now we need to run around and try to find and kill the electric zombie first. If we kill any other zombies, that can mess us up. So we, we'll have to redo it next round. So make sure you kind of train around the tower. It's not too hard. Remember to use your specialist. Do not use brain rot and do not use a homunculus during this challenge. And now, um, if you want to go and ham and just kill everything, you can only do that if the one remaining is the very last one on the list. Because it's only going to spawn one of these each special zombies. So I'm going to go ahead and try to find the electric. So for example, again, if I kill the gladiator or the water before I kill the electric, I'll have to restart the challenge. So my first zombie is electric. So let's see if we can find that one. You might just want to run around each area, try to find out, figure out where it's at. And again, we have the specialist if we do get cornered or something, anything dangerous happens. Okay, so looks like not spawned down there. You gotta watch out because regular zombies are gonna spawn. Okay, so there they are. There's the electric right there. This can be a little difficult, I'm not gonna lie. It can be a little hard because these guys like to bundle up with each other. So there's the electric. Okay, we got him. Ooh, gotta be careful. So we got electric. So next on our list, if we look at the list again, is the gladiator. So now we have to kill the gladiator. Um, so um, the best way to kill the gladiator, of course, is the specialist, but also the shield's fire works really well on him. Oh, maybe he got killed by accident? Alright, well, I guess I'll kill the water. I mean, the water's next on the list. Alright, so that was a little strange. So, I did that one successfully, although I guess the gladiator must have died while I killed something else. So... You'll notice you've done this right when you see the symbol spawn up on there. See how there's four permanent symbols? So if you do it right, um, what you can do is you can actually go and use the tower again immediately. You do not have to progress the round if you get it right the first time. So go ahead and back to your notes. Go ahead and erase everything that we noted down. And you're going to use the tower again. All right, so we're going to try this again. So let's see what we get. So we got Brawler, it looks like. Looks like we got Gladiator, I think. Yeah, looks like Gladiator to me. Yep. Then we got Electric. And then it looks like we got the Blight Father. All right. So again, I'm going to put all those down in my notes. So now we just gotta make sure we kill the bla uh, brawler, then the gladiator, then the electric zombie, then the blight father. Just be careful not to kill the one you don't need to kill. So we got the brawler. So there we go, we did the gladiator. Again, if you want to use the rapid shots where you spam the reload button and the fire button on this thing to kill the zombies, it's really good for this step. So next up is electric. And then finally, it is the blight father. And I'll just pull out my specialist for this one. So this guy's a bit of an asshole. There we go. And now you know you did the challenge right when the whole tower is lit up. So you are ready to move on to your next step. So for this next step, you can go ahead and feel free to save a zombie at the end of the round, if you so please. Um, in the meantime, if while you're just surviving and stuff or trying to save a zombie, you can also work on getting specialist weapon kills. Um, we will have a step coming up very soon, which will make use of our specialist weapon, like mandatorily. And um, you might want to have it at level 3 by then. Just a suggestion. So if you haven't already, another thing you want to do before you start this next step is you want to get a gun with kilowatt on it. Um, you can do this um, before you start it too or after you start it, but you're going to need it either way. So if you want, just go ahead and go to the pack and punch, get like a good LMG out of the box, maybe get the Hellion if you want, and get the kilowatt effect on it, you can go ahead. So when you activate this little uh, pedestal in the middle of the arena, you're going to get teleport underground. Um, in my experience, it usually teleports like you to the Odin Zeus temple entrance so I will go ahead and use that but I mean we'll see where it spawns us don't worry those zombies will respawn yep so the Odin Zeus temple entrance so you're gonna be locked down here in the basement and what you need to do is there's gonna be 
four cranks that you need to shoot. They're going to be through barriers and up towards the ceiling. Um, since you spawned at the Odin Zeus Temple entrance, I'm going to show a little diagram that shows you where each crank is through what barrier and where at. Now this is just a very rough sketch that I made personally of the uh, basement. Just in case you know you need to get a refresher on where each room is and just to show you which route I would take. So as soon as you spawn in, I like to go back towards the Odin Tunnel, which is right here. And if you go right here, the first crank's going to be up there. You can go ahead and just shoot it with any weapon. Just go ahead and shoot it. Then the next one, if you follow that around, is going to be at the Collapsed Tunnel, which is the area just outside Ra, which is right here. Might have to crouch. Okay, so that one went up into the ceiling. So you're going to follow that around to where you get next to the Danu Tunnel. Again, that similar spot to the right of the Mozu Wall by. Go ahead and shoot that one. This might take a lot of bullets, so just be ready. There you go, so lift it up into the ceiling. And then the final one is in the Cursed Room, which is just past the Flood Crypt right here on the right. So it's just these little cranks that are past these barriers. And then you got to quote, the gr a great storm approaches. So... You are no longer locked in the basement. You can now leave. And what you'll have to do, I'm going to repair my shield real quick, but what you have to do is return to the arena. So I will cut to you when I do that. So once you return to the main arena, you'll see that each, like, kind of side of the arena, each side of it has these little sparks next to them now. And as you can see, these little things that we shot underground are now up here. Um, so these little uh, cranks have now come up to the top of ground, and now they're each... Um, have these little electric circles. So what you have to do is you have to kill zombies and activate the alternate ammo type of kilowatt while they are inside those little kind of like these little pie slices that are in the ground. Now, I just want to let you know one thing about this step. You do need to do quite a few zombies and the Hellion with, so the rocket launcher, the Hellion, when you have that with kilowatt, it does not count on regular zombies. But... It does count for brawlers and gladiators. And I want to segue into another thing that you need to know about doing this step. All you have to do is kill two brawlers or two gladiators with kilowatt while they're in here. So with a kilowatt weapon, and then that will completely fill a circle. And that really is the best way to do this step. Um, I recommend making use of homunculuses to do this. I think if you can throw one homunculus out, you can get, you know, two to come in here if you train around for a bit then you can throw another one out like in here pop an equipment so on and so forth um, that is going to be the best way to fill up these like little sides of the map so I'm going to go ahead and get some brawlers to spawn in again just to reiterate um, you got to charge these up once they're charged like these little circles will go away um, best way to do it is to kill two gladiators a gladiator and a brawler or two brawlers in the circles and then yeah Make sure you do it with your kilowatt weapon, and I will cut to that happening. So I just had a brawler spawn in, and there's another one. So you can go ahead and throw a homunculus down right here, if you want. Let them go to the homunculus, and then just start killing one, and then kill the other. And we can get the max ammo. And there we go, so that's one whole square done just by killing those two brawlers. And again, brawlers and gladiators, they will spawn in throughout the game. So you will be safe um, to go ahead and do those throughout your game. So just wait for more to spawn in. Do the exact same thing. Throw a homunculus, take your hellion slash your LMG or whatever, and just lay into them. Alright, so now I just got that next circle filled up. Okay, so we got a brawler that spawned in. Let's see if we can get anything else. Up, oh, there's another gladiator. Well, you know. So there's another square circle right there that needs to be filled, so I'll go ahead and throw that out. Go ahead and kill that guy right there. And it looks like our next circle is done. So as you can see, again, those brawlers and those heavies, they are great for filling these things up. 
They fill them up really quickly, make it really easy. Uh, much faster than if you were just to get a bunch of zombies in them. So again, I just throw out another homunculus. All of them are going to it. I'm going to try to kill the brawler first, because they usually have less HP. Then try to kill the gladiator. And looks like that one's done too now. So, what you have to do is after all four of those little uh, electric kind of pulls have been charged, make sure you have a shield. Go to the middle of the boss arena, or the, uh, yeah, this main arena right here, and just go use one of the orbs in the corner. Like, just use any one of them. Just pop one, and then that will start the specialist weapon round. So what's going to happen, and you might want to have a level 3 specialist before you start this, you will be using your specialist to kill gladiators and brawlers. So there will be an infinite spawn of them, and whenever you kill an enemy during this time period, your uh, specialist will get a full recharge on its, like, duration. So there, see how I just killed that guy? So now my hammer's already back to full charge. So you're just going to basically keep killing all the guys during this round that spawn in. Um, my recommendation is actually kind of stay around the middle, like, podium area. Um, it gets a little crazy, but as long as you have the hammer and you keep kind of doing these, like, little donuts around here, like, while they're all up here, you can go ahead and do that. So again, just kind of like doing stuff like this. Here, I'll show you. Like doing these little donuts up here. You should be pretty safe. Um, I've never had a problem doing this. Um, it does get a little risky sometimes. Remember, you do have a homunculuses and the shield to help you out. So those should help make this a little bit less terrifying. And you do have shield armor, of course, from, you know, getting the kills and just moving around. So again, I'm just doing donuts around this center kind of challenge podium. And for the most part, it's pretty safe. Like I said, just spam the melee. And you're going to have infinite hammer time because every time you kill one, it gets a full recharge. You might get stuck sometimes. Just move around the enemies if you do. And there we go. Just finished it. So I didn't get into any kind of trouble until the very end there. And now you'll see that you have a P. Zeus. So now we did Ra with the little obelisk. We just did Zeus with the... um. With that challenge, the specialist challenge, so all that's left is Odin. And I will show you how we do the Odin challenge right after I save a zombie. Alright, so, you have now um, just finished the specialist um, uh, round, and again, you've saved a zombie. Now, you don't have to save a zombie during a lot of these if you're good on your feet and you know the steps down by heart. You can save a lot of time if you just go and do these, like, mid... Some of these things you can just do mid-round, but I'm just doing it this way and showing you this way so you ha just have a clear understanding of how to do each step. So, you just finished the specialist weapon round step. So, now what you have to do is you have to get the Death of Orion. If you Now, I kept the Death of Orion throughout the whole game. If you, for some reason, swapped it out, maybe you got a weapon out of the box you would rather use over the Death of Orion, go ahead. That's fine, too. So, I'm going to show you another diagram. So, once you have the Death of Orion... Um, you need to come again back here to the kind of underground tunnels of the map. There's going to be three spots that you need to stand in three symbols you need to shoot at a very, very, very specific angle. Um, so I'll show up a diagram to show where they are, and I will show you how to do each one. So I will start out with the two easiest in my opinion. So the first easiest is at the Odin Tunnel. So I'm going to go to the Odin Tunnel, and I will cut to you once I'm there. So you're going to come to the Odin Tunnel. You're going to be right here at the pit, and your first symbol, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to walk up here. Let me kill... And then you're going to have to look through these cracks on the wall right here. Let me kill this guy. And then hit it right there around the middle of the symbol. Now, how do you know if you hit the symbol correctly? Well, if you don't hit the symbol correctly, um, that symbol will not stay lit up. Now, you can't just hit that symbol, again, to reiterate, from any angle. You can't hit it here. That won't let it work. You've got to hit it from the angle I showed you earlier. So the angle is right here through the cracks. You're going to shoot it right through the center of it, about right there. Okay? Now, the next symbol you can hit is at the crypts, which is not too far from here. This is probably the second easiest symbol. So it's right here through this barricade on the right, and it's right up there on the wall. So you need to position yourself so that way you can just barely see the symbol. So you need to be like right here behind the brick. Then you're going to shoot the top left of it about right there. And I didn't get it, so I'm going to try again. There we go. Now I got it. So you might have to hit it a few times, but just make sure you're shooting it from that angle. You can see that my first two shots, it didn't count because it didn't stay lit up. 
But now if you look at it staying lit up and it's sparkling, that is how you know you've done it right. So your final symbol is going to be at the Danube Tunnel. This is the one that gives people the most problems. It's the one that's on this little thing right here. Um, oops, I think I accidentally just shot it correctly the first time. Okay, so um, how you actually light this one up, what you have to do is another thing you can do, well you can't just shoot it at the angle I just shot at, which is right there, but if you don't want to do that, which because that could take you a long time and you can end up not hitting it, another way to do it, and this is the way I usually do it, is align yourself with this little circle right here. Straighten your guy out, jump, and then at the, about the apex of your jump, shoot it from right there. So it's around the apex, you might have to fall a little bit, but that is generally where you have to shoot it, just like that. Like you have to shoot through here and hit these other two symbols. So again, I just want to repeat myself for the Danu one. You go up to it, you line yourself with the little circle, you straighten yourself out, you jump, and you try to basically shoot through the circle. You might have to drop a little bit, but if you do it like that, that is a pretty good way to get it every time. So now at this point in the game, you have a couple of options. Um, if you want to make the rest of your game a little bit easier, you can try to get the Hellion out of the box at this point. So I might hit the box a little bit, try to get it. If I don't get it, that's fine. Otherwise, you do want to make sure you have the Death of Orion. I have the Pack-a-Punch version of it. And you also definitely want to have Homunculus for this step. Um, but until then, it does not hurt to hit the box and try to get a Hellion. And if you can Pack-a-Punch that Hellion to as much as you can, um, that is also really helpful for this next part of the Easter egg. So I will cut to that. Alright, so I just got the Hellion out of the box. Um, again, you can get this a little earlier if you want in the game. If you want to basically just start the... If you want to get this like really, really early on, you can. But I wouldn't say it's super necessary until around this time in the game. But once you have your Hellion quad pack-a-punched, you go ahead and can start the um, challenge if you want. I'm actually probably going to wait till the end of this round so I can get a max ammo so I can get some ammo for my Sir Cat's Kiss. Alright, so after you've shot all the symbols, you have your Hellion if you wanted to go get it. You're going to go to this little room in the pit. This is just right where you build your shield. You're going to want to stand on this little like pressure plate right here. And if you're in co-op, make sure your whole team stands here. You're just going to wait a bit, and then the lockdown will start. So this is, again, to appease Odin. You're going to go through three waves of enemies that are going to spawn in with varying degrees of difficulty. Um, I will just say this. The last wave includes Blight Fathers. So do be ready for that. Um, again, you have your homunculus, you have your specialist, you have the Hellion, maybe not. If not, hopefully you have a decent gun. And you have the Death of Orion, and the Death of Orion can really, really help with this step. If you want to train the zombies around, you can do that. You can also throw out a homunculus if you ever need to. So I'll go ahead and pop that, and then just do that. That's a nice little strat with the Hellion. Just herd him up and then freeze him, then blow him to high hell. <coughs> Another thing that I would like to mention about this challenge is after you complete like each phase, there's like three phases, three phases of it, um, you will get a permanent max ammo spawn. So just be aware of that. Alright, so for a second there I thought my game glitched. Nothing was happening. So, as you can see, that max ammo just spawned there. Another thing I forgot to mention earlier is you can use this trap right here to help take out the zombies coming through the left door. So you also have that that you can use too. So now, after everything has been killed, and there's no more enemies spawning in, you're going to go back over this little grate right here, and you'll see a little key that's sparking right there that float up out of the water. You're going to go ahead and pick that up. The doors will unlock, and you can now leave that little room. Now, if you need to do any final boss prep, you need to get perks, specialists, homunculuses, your team needs to get homunculuses, whatever, ammo, do it now. Well, ammo is not super important. You'll want to have going with some, a little bit of ammo. We'll have more max ammos during the boss fight. But this is the final thing you'll do before entering the boss fight. You, you have access to the boss fight. So if you've got to do anything else before you fight the boss, go ahead and do it now. So whenever you're ready to start the boss fight, um, just go over to this gate right here and hold square on it. Um, if you're in a co-op game, all your teammates will have to hold square on that door, I believe. Just keep that in mind. So, this is the boss arena. This is what it looks like. Um, you're going to have some tigers, some brawlers, and some gladiators spawn in. And you might want to let them come out of the gate, too, because they're going to drop power-ups, and especially max ammos. So, during this boss fight, 
you should have frequent max ammos that are going to be dropped by these zombies. Now, do note that these max ammos are permanent, and I highly recommend you leave them around the arena um, in the meantime, and only pick them up when you really need them. Another big element of this boss fight is going to be the homunculus. Now, again, if you have the hellion, the boss fight's not going to be too hard. The bosses in this map, I'd say, are at about medium difficulty. Um, but just make sure you have the, the homunculuses on the side because you'll really need them because when you're trying to shoot the bosses, a lot of other zombies will come and try to kill you in the me like in between doing that. Um, so I'll just um, start killing these guys, maybe try to see if I can get a couple max ammos to spawn in. Um, but in the meantime, you do not have to kill these guys. You can just train around until the boss enters the arena, and then I will get back to you then. All right. So the first boss has now spawned in, so you cannot shoot them right away. They do have to do a little walk animation first. So this boss is an elephant known as Fury. Now, in order to kill this boss, you have got to shoot the sides of its armor. So if you look on the sides of its armor, it has these little chains. You might want to be careful with the Hellion here. Make sure you don't accidentally uh, hit yourself with it, and make sure it doesn't like lock onto something else you don't want to hit. So what you're going to be doing is there's a little change that little orb on the side of his body. You're basically going to be uh, focusing on those things. Now I do have one important thing you need to know about this boss and the next boss that's going to come after this. Spoiler alert, there's two bosses. Um, that forehead on the elephant, if you stand still for too long, so what he does is he occasionally, that little gem in his head, he occasionally launches a attack from his forehead that is an insta-kill if you get hit by it directly. So make sure that, you know, if you have Danu, it'll just pop the Danu, but make sure you don't stand still for too long. Um, after its armor breaks, which isn't too long, as you can see, you can shoot its ribcage, but you can also shoot its skull, and that does a lot of damage on it. Those are kind of its weak points. So as you can see, we just killed that boss right there because the Hellion's really broken and overpowered. Um, so we have now killed Fury, so that's boss number one on the map. So you will now be introduced to boss number two here in a second. All right, and now here is our second boss. So this is Wrath. So our second boss is the Elephant Wrath. The first one was Fury. It's the same as the last boss fight, although this one is a little bit more powerful. So what you're going to do is, again, just make sure once the boss comes out of its door, you're going to give it a couple of seconds. Go ahead and throw a homunculus down. I recommend kind of staying around this middle pillar. It'll provide you cover from the guys on its back. And it'll also provide you cover from its one-hit kill uh, ranged attack that shoots out of its forehead. So again, I threw a homunculus out. I'm going to throw another one. Another thing you can do is pop stock, auction, stock option here and then just hammer into him. So there you go. That was his one-hit attack. Thankfully, I think I was behind the barricade, so I survived that. But I just barely survived. I almost got killed. So now we're just going to go up to Wrath again. Watch out for his, his ranged attacks. He has a lot of ranged attacks. Go ahead and start hammering into him. Oh, got to be careful here. Almost went down. So I need some more homunculuses, so I'm going to go grab another max ammo. Again, don't forget those max ammos are permanent. So I went ahead and threw it out. Also, he's going to lay traps around the arena, so just watch out for those. And again, just spam him. Hit his head if you can. Okay, that I believe was his ranged attack. Make sure you get out of the way of that. That can insta-kill you, and I think we actually killed him. Yep. So there you go. He's dead. So again, you can shoot his ribcage. Just any part on his body that's red. And then after that, all you have to do is survive for a little bit longer, and then congratulations. You will have completed the nine Easter egg. So there you go. You now complete the Easter egg. This has been David from the Mr. Black YouTube channel. Thanks for checking out the video. I hope this guide helped you, and I will see you next time. Bye.